this is a really good indication on how the pyramids or this pyramid uh, was built, how the exterior red granite was built here. You can see this would be a mating surface that would mate in an almost airtight um, relationship to this stone right here. And then afterwards, this would be cut off. This whole side would be cut off back to this level. And the interesting thing that I've just found here is, are we getting busted? Is this level right here. And then, oh, us? Okay. All right. Is how this stone comes, like we're not climbing on the pyramid. Was that us? Yeah, she, he was looking at us. But oh, okay. All right. As I started going down, he stopped us. Okay. Just got busted. Man. Hello and welcome. Today we're investigating the red granite casing stones at the base of the Menkauri Pyramid. This pyramid gets much less attention when compared to its bigger brothers, and yet I find it a blast to investigate. It has some very interesting finds, especially when you take a closer look at how it was built. My background is in architecture and construction, and this was the first place I noticed something unusual in its construction method and the impossibly tight-fitting granite blocks. I was truly shocked. This was supposed to be constructed using hand tools and simple pulleys. I went on to find a pervasive level of absolute precision in every encounter I had with these massive blocks of red granite. Everywhere I looked, I found evidence of a past building technology that rivaled and likely exceeded our current abilities at this scale. Creating these blocks of very hard red granite stone in this manner would require the largest and most expensive computer-controlled CNC milling machines on the planet. Then placing them into an airtight relationship with the blocks around them without mortar and subsequently flattening the exterior surface uniformly in the 21st century would be so incredibly difficult at this scale as to be literally currently an impossible feat. And yet, here it stands for all to see. Please leave me a comment if you have any ideas about this. At the base is one of the most incredible things to look at. And it's all because of these stones here and the way they're placed. It shows how the pyramids were built, or at least how the casing stones were, were assembled. And then shaved flat. They were not produced outside and cut into the pieces that they would then be placed in here. They were on the sides and and the, the incredible thing is you can see these are not these are not uh, straight lines. So it's just it boggles the mind how they did this because the joints in here are absolutely airtight. They are, they are so precise, and yet they were first placed in this manner, and then, the, then afterwards they were shaved. Using what? I don't know. Maybe the uh, tool that I uh, pointed out in Aswan that seemed to be able to melt granite, and then the uh, at Luxor and Karnak, you were able to see some of the effects of some destructive uh, tool that was used to actually melt the granite. But if you look up on the sides of the of the uh, surfaces here, you do see some interesting marks. Um, and then, of course, this area here is uh, being flattened, and it's fairly flat as it is. Of course, there's been some erosion on these joints but they are still absolutely perfectly tight. So there, here I am next to the Sphinx in this granite enclosure here. And these builders had the ability to assemble these structures with tolerances that we can only achieve in the 21st century. This 
is how tight the seam is. The tip of my finger is the mate mating between two stones that weigh in excess of 20,000 pounds each. And this is everywhere in here. Everywhere in here is that tight of tolerance. But there is definitely hard evidence pointing to the fact that whoever or whatever created these structures had the ability to fashion these absolutely massive blocks. This block here has got to be 10 feet by, well, you can see how big these things are. These are monsters. And yet, if you look at the precision that was used to put these together, this is the seam right here. This is the seam here. You, can, you can't even see it. There it is. That is the seam right there. How old is this area? How old is this granite? Why are there no hieroglyphics here? And again, these joints here are perfect. I believe you can see here. Perfect joints. Go oh, right here, look at that. Just barely see it. We're close to the Sphinx here. Let's take a look inside here. So here we are right next to the Sphinx and as you can see these are massive, massive pieces of granite. And uh, this area must have been submerged in sand. Oh look at that, you can see the reflection of that man's shirt against the side of this piece of granite. Check this out. So flat, there's a reflection of people as they walk by, you can see. Watch this. So imagine this entire area, these massive stones were polished or cut that precisely. So this video clip was actually from my first day investigating the Minkauri Pyramid. I hadn't yet seen the surface finish and this was my initial reaction to seeing the impossibly tight joinery of these massive red granite blocks. After having time to think about the possible methods used here that I could relate to, I believe it's reasonable to conceive that the builders left the rough extended surface face 
to likely wrap a strap around it, the joints, place it, or left it there as a lip to use as a lever to raise the block up slightly during placement, maybe for the purpose of cleaning the surfaces or for some additional treatment for bonding. One interesting observation is the transition from the flattened surface to the rough surface. This does not show any hand tool markings, but instead a smooth transition in a single curved stroke, indicating possibly the surface was flattened in a single stage to its finished surface. This is very unusual unless the finished depth and the angle was mechanically known and controlled during the process. The upper blocks have a more pronounced nubs that were possibly used with long poles or machinery that was able to push them upward by catching the nubs on the end. Again, possibly for some positioning or bonding treatment. This is a joint. You can't even see the joint. Cannot even see that. I have to go into macro mode here. This joint is so tight. That is my fingertip. see this joint here. It is so perfect. That's a coincidence. Same thing here. One thing to notice is the level of erosion on the surface and within the joints themselves. Other areas close by have an almost mirror smooth surface and I'd imagine this joint was almost invisible when it was first constructed. Based on other locations around <laughs> Egypt things. with red granite, one could possibly figure out how long it would take for this amount of erosion to occur when it was exposed to the elements. Then, add to that the likelihood of its complete burial under the sands of the Sahara for some period of that time as well. Everything gets buried out here very quickly. You simply need to look at the satellite image of this area to see that there still exists entire cities buried under the sand. Based on this evidence, it's impossible to date this construction and most certainly must have been built by builders with access to incredibly capable technology. Perfect joint. You couldn't get a more precise joint than that. That is a little tool mark right there. Yeah, there's another one there. So something that would cause another one there. And you, once you start looking looking at it, you can start to see them. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're little. They're all in the this direction, right? There's another one. Yeah. So, so yeah, there is two marks here. 
very <laughs> but it's very strange i mean the, the the ability to flatten something so i'm here in front of the red pyramid minkuri pyramid we're just doing a little walk around here and uh i just noticed one of the surfaces of the blocks here had a very unusually flat line there and this would be the mating look at that this this surface back here would be the mating surface that would mate up against another block and this portion here would be cut back most likely so this this was sacrificial here and uh, we'll see that on the other side of the pyramid here so we're just poking around here looking at uh pyramid and this is a really good indication on how the pyramids or this pyramid uh, was built how the exterior red granite was built here you can see this would be a mating surface that would mate in an almost airtight um, relationship to this stone right here and then afterwards this would be cut off this whole side would be cut off back to this level and the interesting thing that i've just found here is are we getting busted oh, is this well. level right here and the, oh us Go ahead. okay yeah. all right is how this stone comes we're not climbing on the pyramid Good. I was that us? Yeah, she, he was looking at us. Oh, okay. All as right. As I started going down, it stopped. But okay. There's a path. There's a path. Here. Yeah, yeah. We're just walking around. All right. But that was so interesting, right? That's that's, that's strange. That's very strange. Just got busted, man. We're not climbing. We just got kicked off this pyramid, but we were just up, up there looking at those those rocks up there, and it, very curious. You can see their angles there. We were looking at the mating surfaces. I'll reference that, and then there was that large stone right there. The strange thing about that large stone, I don't know if you can see it, but it angles as it goes back in. So we have multiple angles on these stones which makes no sense if you were trying to build something very quickly. The other thing that, uh, that I noticed is there's a level of resolution on the surfaces of these stones. Um, they, uh, they seem just like a printer might have a DPI. These stones are all finished to the same exact degree of flatness. They're not mirror flat, but they all have the same degree of flatness, which I think is uh, also explanatory in terms of the mechanics of how they went ahead and, uh, and built these. So I was talking about resolution here. And one thing I've noticed in granite, um, even down in Aswan, was granite gets finished in degrees of resolution. Like there's coarse passes and then a medium pass and then a fine pass and then an ultra fine pass and a maybe mirror pass. And here's a really good example here of something. And there's, unfortunately, the, oh, maybe I can come around from this direction. Oh yeah, there it is better. And you can see, you can see how there's this even surface here and then a finer surface on this side here. And I'm gonna zoom in on this and there's a mark there that I find very interesting here. Let's see, where's my finger? There, look at that. Look at that mark there. What is that? Look at that. Just pull back, you can definitely see the resolution. So when I was in Elephantine Island, there was a box that was not completely finished. So here I am in Aswan, and uh, I'm in the Temple of the Moon. And this is one of the more curious constructions of the ancient builders, or potentially, I'm not quite sure who built this. 
but it is very precisely made. It appears to have machined surfaces and uh, it also appears to be not, not completed here. It's very very interesting. So I wanna draw your attention to this faceted surface here. You can see, you can see how it's faceted here. But then you come up here and it is smooth. And it's smooth up to the top there. It's faceted down here and it's, so it, it, it has this very interesting quality that it, there's pieces on this that are not entirely done. And there's some other stuff here that I think is really fascinating for a surface that for an object that's absolutely huge is you can see up here that it's not the same as it is down there. Uh, it's almost if, as if this upper part is finished and as it goes down on this side, as it comes down here, then this, this side has not yet been finished to the level as it is up here. Now I'm just speculating on that. The surface quality here is definitely, it's not, it's not mirror smooth. Um, it, it hasn't, but this is quite interesting here. So again, this faceted facing down there and then it abruptly ends there. So just looking at this. And then here you can see that this surface has not been completely flattened as well. This is a perfect time to see this because in photographs, and this is also interesting, was this surface going to have another pass like uh, in the Serapium, we saw um, uh, multiple passes on surfaces where it was kind of rough and then it would get finer and finer and finer. And I noticed there's this, this edge here that, uh, again, just poking around here, getting a little bit closer look at this object. It's a fascinating object. It's massive here. Um, it's definitely looks to be well built, but I can tell right away that the dimensions of it are not are not uh, are not perfect. Again, over here, this dimension up here is greater than this dimension down here. So in photographs, you look at this and you're like, that looks like a perfect, but this surface here is flat. And I can feel that. And you can see that right there. Look at that surface is flat. This surface, this surface is not quite as flat. So it almost looks like they were doing, well, whoever was building this, that is flat. Not mirror smooth, but I mean, even that is flat. This surface is also flat. On the other side, I can see that the surface is not completely flat. This surface here, oh wow. Okay, look at that. So this surface, yeah, you can see, you can see some light under there. This surface is flatter, but as you come down, wow, that's cool. Okay, so as you come down this, as you come down here, it gets rougher and rougher and rougher. 
So this was being man as this was being manufactured here. It was being manufactured from this point and this surface was being cut back and as it was being cut back it was being refined. Again this surface here you can see you can hear it right there. But as you come up here, it gets finer and finer and finer. And then look up here. Up here, it's smooth. Smooth, you see that? It's smooth. But then as you get down here, it gets rougher and rougher. And rougher down here. Wow, that is very, very curious. Yeah, you can clearly see two different levels of finish there. Very interesting. All right. Let's keep on poking around here and see what else we see. So here we see the wall. And this is how the wall is initially stacked. And we looked at those mating. Hey, at... Yes, we go. We're going. Yeah, yes. Yes, we're going. Go? We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We're going. We walk. We're going down that way. And you can see these, the way that these stones were stacked up here. And uh, and then the the curious notches which you see in uh, Peru. Those notches, you see those same exact notches in in Peru. Those sucks of Huayman. And then there's this piece of black diorite here. It's kind of out of out of place, which is re really interesting. But check this out over here. We come across here. Again, those things. And then you look at how tight these joints are here. Check these out. Check this out, bro. Check out these joints here. Oh my. Like you can't even see it. How close those joints are. And so those are those mating surfaces. So they put these stones together here like this. Then they cut this down. And then it's incredible. Now I'm not saying this is evidence here of, of how it was used, but look at that. Could that be the same kind of flaking we see in Aswan? I don't know. I don't know. But it's highly interesting. Oh, this is diorite here, this piece right here. So this is a very interesting pyramid.